modern Christianity and the obsession with materialism, fighting a ghost. A very annoying discussion with Christians is about materialism. They are obsessed with that. What the hell means materialism? When materialism means dualism, unpacking a misunderstood debate. Have you ever felt like religious critiques of materialism often miss the mark? You're not alone. Many religious or spiritual thinkers claim to oppose materialism, but what they're often addressing isn't materialism in the strict sense. It's dualism, or at least a version of it shaped by centuries of philosophical baggage. Let's dig into why this confusion exists and what it reveals about how we think about the mind, body, and spirit. Materialism versus dualism. A quick primer. Materialism holds that matter is the fundamental substance of reality. Everything, from consciousness to morality, arises from material interactions. Dualism, famously championed by René Descartes, splits reality into two distinct realms. Residential cogitans, the immaterial mind or soul. Residential extensa, the physical, extended world of matter. While materialism outright denies the need for an immaterial realm, dualism places matter and spirit in opposition, with the latter often seen as superior. Why do religious critiques target materialism? Religious critiques of materialism are common. These critiques usually claim that materialism reduces humans to soulless machines. It denies the existence of God or any spiritual dimension. It undermines morality, purpose, and meaning in life. But here's the kicker. These critiques often assume a dualistic framework. This means they're not attacking materialism itself, but the consequences of viewing reality as divided between the material and the immaterial. Ironically, this mindset is closer to Descartes dualism than to materialism. How dualism shaped the debate. René Descartes' influence on Western thought can't be overstated. His strict separation of mind and body had profound implications, many of which aligned with religious views. The soul, mind, is immaterial, divine, and eternal. The body is material, flawed, and transient. This hierarchy resonated with religious traditions, reinforcing the idea that the spiritual realm is higher and more meaningful than the physical. However, it also laid the groundwork for materialism by isolating the body as a purely mechanical system, which later thinkers could study independently of the soul. When religious critics argue against materialism, they often conflate it with the idea that the body is just a machine, a notion born not of materialism, but of Cartesian dualism. The real conflict, misinterpreting materialism. When someone critiques materialism as a soulless or nihilistic worldview, they're often responding to a straw man. Materialism doesn't inherently deny beauty, morality, or purpose. Instead, it suggests that these qualities arise from natural processes. The real clash may lie in a misunderstanding shaped by dualism. Dualism insists on a separation between the material and the spiritual. Materialism challenges this division, arguing that everything, including consciousness, can be explained through physical processes. But religious perspectives often interpret materialism through a dualistic lens, assuming that denying an immaterial soul means denying meaning altogether. This isn't true, but the confusion persists. Bridging the gap. Understanding the difference between materialism and dualism can help clarify these debates. Religious critiques often reject Cartesian assumptions without realizing it. When they say materialism, they're often critiquing a world divided by dualistic ideas of body and soul. Materialism doesn't mean nihilism. It simply rejects the need for a separate immaterial realm to explain consciousness, morality, or beauty. By recognizing this, we can move beyond simplistic narratives and engage in more nuanced conversations about reality and meaning. Reframing the debate. When religious individuals critique materialism, what they're often grappling with is the legacy of dualism. The real question isn't whether the universe is purely material or spiritual, but how we reconcile these perspectives. Can we find meaning without invoking an immaterial soul? Is it possible to embrace the beauty and mystery of life without relying on dualistic frameworks? These are deep, complex questions, ones that deserve more than dismissive labels or philosophical misunderstandings. Conclusion who's really fighting the ghosts. 
Religious critiques of materialism often feel like battles against a 17th century ghost. But the ghost isn't materialism, it's Cartesian dualism. Descartes' framework continues to shape how we think about the mind, body, and spirit, even as we move toward more integrated understandings of reality. So, the next time someone critiques materialism, ask yourself, are they really addressing the issue, or are they haunted by dualistic assumptions? The answer might surprise you, and it might just lead to a richer, more meaningful conversation. Bonus Discussion when religious or spiritually inclined people critique materialism, they're often targeting something broader or slightly misrepresented. In many cases, they are indeed responding to Cartesian dualism, or at least a simplified version of it, without realizing it. Let's break this down. 1. The Religious Critique of Materialism When religious individuals criticize materialism, they often mean reductionism, the idea that everything, including consciousness, emotions, and morality, can be reduced to physical processes. A godless universe, a worldview that dismisses the spiritual, divine, or transcendent. Ethical implications, concerns that materialism undermines values, purpose, or the sanctity of life. But here's the twist. What they're really grappling with might not be materialism in the strict philosophical sense, the belief that only matter exists, but a worldview shaped by dualistic assumptions. 2. Dualism's Role in the Confusion Descartes' dualism gave the mind and body distinct realms. Over time, this division led people to see the material, body, as less significant or even antagonistic to the immaterial soul. For many religious frameworks, this dualistic hierarchy resonates. The soul, immaterial, is divine, eternal, and connected to God. The body, material, is transient, flawed, and prone to sin. When they hear materialism, they might conflate it with an outright rejection of the soul, assuming it denies the possibility of spiritual truths or transcendence. In reality, they are critiquing the materialistic consequences of a Cartesian framework that prioritizes the immaterial. 3. Why this matters in modern debates Religious critiques of materialism often feel like attacks on atheism or secularism, which they associate with a soulless, mechanical worldview. However, materialists argue that everything, including mind and spirit, can be understood through physical processes without negating beauty, morality, or purpose. The real tension might not be between materialism and religion, but between monism. Everything is one kind of thing, e.g. matter, and dualism two distinct realms. By assuming that materialists are locked into Cartesian assumptions, religious critics risk debating a straw man, rejecting not materialism itself, but their interpretation of a world devoid of spirituality or meaning. 4. Moving beyond the misunderstanding. If we reframe the debate, it becomes clear that materialism and dualism are not as starkly opposed as they seem. Materialism challenges the need for a separate immaterial realm but doesn't inherently deny meaning, morality, or wonder. Religious perspectives might align more closely with non-Cartesian dualisms or even certain forms of idealism, which also reject strict material reductionism but don't affirm the rigid body-slash-soul divide Descartes proposed. The Real Fight Simplistic Narratives versus Nuanced Understanding when a religious person says materialism, they might unconsciously mean dualism because the conversation has been shaped by centuries of Cartesian influence. The challenge is to disentangle these ideas and explore whether the real conflict is about matter, meaning, or simply differing interpretations of reality. Your insight opens a fascinating door. Perhaps the real issue isn't about whether the universe is material or spiritual. It's about how we bridge the gap between these perspectives. Materialism before Descartes. Materialism, the idea that matter is the fundamental substance of reality, existed well before Descartes. Ancient Greek philosophers like Democritus and Epicurus developed early forms of materialism. They proposed that the universe consisted of atoms and void, with no need for supernatural explanations. What did Descartes actually do? René Descartes, 1596-1650, is more accurately associated with dualism, not materialism. He proposed a strict distinction between mind, residential cogitans, and body, 
residential extensa, claiming that the mind is immaterial and fundamentally different from the physical world. Descartes' dualism, in fact, stood in opposition to materialism because he posited that not everything could be reduced to matter. His philosophy gave rise to questions about the interaction between mind and body, a problem that has fueled debates for centuries. Modern materialism. The resurgence of materialism as a dominant worldview came later, particularly with the development of modern science. Thinkers like Thomas Hobbes in the 17th century and later Ludwig Farbach and Karl Marx argued for materialist perspectives that rejected Descartes' dualism. Why the fight? People might still debate materialism because it intersects with questions about consciousness, free will, and metaphysics. While Descartes' dualism is foundational to many philosophical discussions, materialism continues to evolve in response to advances in neuroscience and physics. So, while Descartes profoundly influenced philosophy, he didn't invent materialism. He actually provided one of its key opposing frameworks. If anything, the ghost you're describing might be Cartesian dualism.